Barry Livingston, Phil Iris, Rochester, Dennis Day, the Sportsman Quartet, and yours truly, Don Wilson. Ladies and gentlemen, let's go out to Jack Benny's home in Beverly Hills, where we find Rochester working as usual. I sure have a lot to do. Every day it's the same thing. Work, work, work. Work, work, work. (laughs) Quiet, Polly. I wouldn't mind, but I never seem to get finished. Got to do the dishes, though, as much against my wishes. You are a slow paw. <laughs> Got to do the shopping, Mr. Benny keeps me hopping. You are a slow paw. <laughs> There's a parrot here who constantly picks on me. He's gonna wind up in a frigazine. <laughs> Rochester. Rochester, what are you doing to Polly? Uh, nothing, boss. Oh. Oh, oh Rochester, uh, bring me a screwdriver, will you, please? Yes, sir. Here you are, boss. Thank you. I just have to tighten this last screw, and I'll have the phonograph all fixed. But, boss, this phonograph has been broken for months. Why are you so anxious to fix it? Because Dennis Day sent over a record that he made especially for me to hear. Gee, I... I can't understand what's wrong with this phonograph. I tried to fix it once before. Well, boss, maybe if I took this and I... Oh, Rochester, now look what you've done. You knocked the horn off. (laughs) And you tipped over the dog, too. (laughs) Watch it, will you, kid? I'm sorry, boss. Let's take another look at the motor and see what's wrong. Okay. Hey, wait a minute. Here's a loose wire. I see where it's supposed to go. I'll just take it and put it in. Pull out the plug! Pull out the plug! (laughs) Boy, what a shock I got. Yeah, I'll bet my hair is standing on end. Should I go in your bedroom and see? <laughs> Don't be funny. There, the wire's fixed. Put in the plug and we'll play some other record before we put on Dennis's. What have we got in the album? Let's see. I'm Forever Blowing Bubbles. Dardanella. The Sheik of Araby. Keep the home fires burning. Katie, and after the ball is over. No, I don't want to spoil those. Play some of the older ones. <laughs> Go ahead. Boss, any record older than these are on cylinders. Oh, well, put some of these on. I want to try it out. Yes, sir. Uh, shall I put in a new needle? Oh, no, Rochester. See, the needle we have uh, was guaranteed to play a thousand records, and we only used it 873 times. <laughs> Memory nothing. Count the notches on the side of the phonograph. (laughs) Now, let's turn it on. Come in. Oh, hello, Mary. Hello, Jack. You told me you were going to take me to the baseball game, and I came over, and you're not even ready. Well, I'll be ready in a minute. Well, why are you fooling around with that phonograph? Because Dennis sent me a record of the song he's going to sing on the program. I want to hear it, and this darn thing is broken again. Oh, Jack, why don't you get rid of that old piece of junk and buy a new one? Oh, Mary, this phonograph isn't so old. Go on, Edison's fingerprints are still on it. (laughs) What? And she means Edison the boy. (laughs) Oh, stop. Now, look, Mary, if I want antiques in my house, that's my business. You and your antiques. You ought to have your whole house done over. Done over? Yes. Did you watch television yesterday and see what they've done to the White House? How beautiful they've made it? Yeah, I saw it. Gee, I thought that tour through the White House was very interesting. But there was one thing I couldn't get over. What was that? Well, there's a doctor's office right in the White House, and 24 hours a day, a doctor and his staff are always on duty. Well, that's right, Jack. President Truman has his own personal doctor. Well, that's what I'm getting at. Wouldn't it be 
cheaper if he belonged to the Blue Cross? <laughs> you would think of that. What? I thought it was wonderful the way the entire nation was invited to the White House. And President Truman even played the piano. Uh, what did he play, Miss Limston? When you say I beg your pardon, then I'll come uh, back. He did not. <laughs> Did he? <laughs> no, no, of course not. Say, boss, I think I fixed the phonograph. Good, good. Well, come on, Jack. If we're going to the ball game, let's get started. In a minute, I want to hear Dennis's record. Rochester, put Dennis's record on. Yes, sir. Uh, what song is it, Jack? Well, Dennis made a special recording for me to hear. It's Irving Berlin's new song called For the Very First Time. Play it, Rochester. <laughs> That new Irving Berlin song was very good, and I never heard Dennis in better voice. Well, I thought he was swell. I thought I was wonderful. <laughs> Dennis, when did you get here? While my record was on. Well, why didn't you say something? When Dennis Day sings, nobody interrupts, Julius. <laughs> Dennis, I was... Just a second. Everybody wants to get into the act. How do you like that? Dennis. It's a catastrophe. Now cut that out! <laughs> and take off that putty nose. <laughs> now, Dennis, why did you send me a record if you were coming over here anyway? I, do I, I thought I, w I wouldn't be able to come. <laughs> I got Durante on for nothing. You see, I was supposed to go to Nevada on some secret government work. You? That's why you didn't come here? I mean, you were going to Nevada for secret government work. What were you supposed to do? Just stand still. Why? They were going to drop a bomb on me. Then. Dennis, that's the most ridiculous thing I ever heard. Oh, you're just mad because they didn't ask you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm mad. Jack, yeah. let's go or we'll be late for the ball game. All right, come on.
Oh, gosh, it's hot out today. It certainly is. I'll say. This morning, my uncle fried an egg on the sidewalk. What? Dennis, you mean your uncle... Mary, Mary, let it alone. <laughs> uh, but, Jack, he said... I know what he said. He said his uncle fried an egg on the sidewalk. Not Yesterday, right. he fried an egg on the sidewalk, too. Really? Mary, I'm warning you. <laughs> The day before that, my uncle fried an egg on the sidewalk, too. Well, it's been hot all week. Yeah, yeah, so he fried eggs on the sidewalk. My uncle hopes it rains tomorrow. Why? For a change, he'd like poached eggs. <laughs> Mary, you, I told, I asked, you... I didn't ask. Look, I asked him. Look, Dennis, Mary and I are going to the ball game. Do you want to go with us or not? I'd like to, but I can't. Good, good. <laughs> Come on, Mary, let's go to the game. Jack, who's playing today? Los Angeles and Seattle. Let's see, we have seats one and two, aisle 15. Where's aisle 15? I don't know. Why don't you ask the usher? No, I can't. I can find it. Come on. Hot dogs, hot dogs, get your red hot chair. Mary, here's aisle 15, but I don't see our seats. Jack, why don't you ask an usher? I'm not going to ask anybody. I always get into arguments with ushers. Besides, I... Wait a minute, there are, there are seats. It hey, looks like somebody's sitting in them. You wait here, I'll go and ask him to leave. Okay. E excuse me, mister, but I think you're sitting in my... Hi, Rob. <laughs> Oh, nice seeing you again. Same here. Shake. Sure. Uh, 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 don't squeeze too hard. That's my milking hand. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Did you come all the way from Calabasas just to see the ball game? No. I had to come in on business from a farm. Business? Yep. Came in to buy a new incubator to hatch our chicks. Incubator, huh? Yep. I don't go for them newfangled things myself, but my wife insisted we get one. She did? Yeah, she said she was tired of taking the eggs to bed with us. <laughs> oh. Uh, personally, I like it. You wake up in the morning feeling like a mother. <laughs> well, I wouldn't know about that. Now, look, uh, there seems to be some mix-up here. I think you're sitting in my seat. No, well, I'm in the right seat. But look at my ticket stubs. Uh, yeah. let, let's see. Mm, seats one and two, aisle 15. Wait a minute. This is the left aisle, 15. You want the right aisle. Oh, yes. Yes, my mistake. Well, I better be getting along. The game will be just hey, Just about... a minute. I'd like to have you meet my wife. Your wife? Yeah. Honey, this is Jack Benny. Well, how do you do? Hello, handsome. <laughs> I'm very happy to meet you. This, uh, this is your wife? Yep. Ain't as much of a hick as you thought I was. <laughs> I'll say you're not. Well, goodbye. So long, Rube. <laughs> uh, Jack, what happened? They weren't our seats. This is the left side of the park. Ours on the right side. Come on, let's hurry. The Seattle team is coming out on the field. Put on your glasses. That's Don Wilson. <laughs> oh, hello, Don. Hello, Jack. Mary. Hello, Don. <laughs> Do you come to the games often? Oh, uh, Mary, I haven't missed a game this season. I love baseball. He sure does, Mary. You know, Don used to play with Denver. That's before he went into radio. That's right, Mary. I played baseball for three years. What position? I covered center field. <laughs> you ain't kidding. <laughs> Don, hey, Don, tell Mary about the time you won the game when you slid into home plate. Oh, Jack, I'd rather not. I'm embarrassed. I don't blame you. Tell me, did they ever find that catcher? <laughs> what a mess that was. You know, I'll never forget. Hey, I think the game is going to start pretty soon. <laughs> What are they booing 
about? Oh, the umpires are coming out on the field. People always do that. Oh, by the way, Don, would you happen to know where right aisle 15 is? Oh, I don't, Jack. Why don't you ask an usher? Never mind. We'll find it ourselves. <laughs> okay. Come on, Mary. Okay. Attention, ladies and gentlemen. The batteries for today's game. For Seattle, Kim's father and Shams. For Los Angeles, Chandler and Lade. You know, Mary, this should really be a great game. Today. Hot dogs. Hey, y'all. Uh, get your red hot chair. Say, Jack, before we sit down, how about getting some hot dogs? Well. Aw, oh, come on, Jack. You only live once. <laughs> Gee, I... I never thought of it that way. <laughs> well, all right. Say, fellow. Yeah? How much are your hot dogs? Twenty-five cents each. Hmm. Twenty-five cents each? How come they're so high? Well, it's this way. Recently, the price of steel went up, so when the farmers buy a plow to raise corn, he has to pay more money for the plow. Then the cattle and hog breeders have to pay more money for the corn, which they use for feed. Then the meat packing houses have to pay more money for the meat. And this price raise is ultimately passed on to the consumer. The same thing holds true for the flour they use to make the rolls. So since the price of the rolls and the meat have both gone up, the price of hot dogs is 25 cents. <laughs> Oh, I was prepared for you this year, Mr. Benny. <laughs> Look, last year you drove me nuts with your dickering. Look, fella. Hey, don't you never buy nothing without getting sealed bids? <laughs> never mind that. Just give me two hot dogs. Okay. What do you want on them? Yeah, I don't know. What have you got on those? Everything. I just dropped them. <laughs> <laughs> well, then give me two fresh ones. Okay, here you are. Thanks. That, that'll be 50 cents. Hmm, let me see. Have you got change for a $20 bill? Yeah, I'm prepared for that one, too. <laughs> Never mind. Just give me my change. <laughs> yeah, here you are. Hot dogs, hot dogs. Get your red hot chair. Come on, Mary. Let's find our seat. Attention, please. There has been a change in the batteries for Seattle. Nagy will pitch instead of Kim's father. Just a minute, Mary. I think this is the aisle we want. No, we're 15 and this is 24. Oh, for heaven's sake, Jack. Why don't you... Well, ask... hiya, Libby. Oh, hello, Phil. Taking the old man to the ball game, eh? <laughs> hiya, Rube. <laughs> hey, Libby, ain't you a little early for Father's Day? <laughs> Phil, you can stop with those cracks about my age already. You're not exactly a Boy Scout yourself. Well, look, Jackson, at least I don't lie about my age. I say I'm 36, I'm 36. <laughs> a likely story. Well, if you don't believe me, look at my union card. It says I'm 36. Phil, I wouldn't believe your union card. Why not? It also says you're a musician. <laughs> Come on, Mary, let's find our seat. Uh would you like to sit with us, Phil? No, Libby, I can't. See, I'm here with some of my boys. I got Kimmick, Remley, and Bagby. Oh. Hey, Jackson. What? Ain't that a shame about Sammy, my drummer? Yeah. When will he be out? <laughs> out? You mean he's in again? Yeah. Yeah, Libby, but it wasn't his fault this time. He just happened to step into a clothing store to buy a new suit. Uh-huh. Sammy tried on a snappy gray number and liked the way it fit him. The trouble started when he stepped outside to see how the suit looked in the sunlight. Why should that start trouble? Well, it was cloudy here, so he took the suit to Palm Springs. <laughs> you see, Mary, it wasn't Sammy's fault. <laughs> yeah, it could happen to anybody. Anyway, Jackson, we'll have to do without him for a while. Well, frankly, Phil, I can't say... Ladies and gentlemen, the first game of today's doubleheader will be nine innings. The second game will be seven innings. Come on, Jack. We better find our seat. The game's about to begin. Okay. See you later, Phil. Hey, wait a minute, Jackson. How about a small bet on the game? A bet? Yeah, I'll take Seattle for $100. $100? Phil, that's too much to bet on anything. You wouldn't really bet that much, would you? Sure I would. Why, once five years ago, I bet $1,000 that Alice had more money than Bing Crosby. Gosh, did you win? I don't know. They're both still counting. <laughs> oh. 
Well, never mind the bet, Phil. See you later. So long, Phil. So long, kid. Come on, Mary. Wait a minute. Here's our aisle. No, that's 35. We must be going in the wrong direction. Well, this is absolutely ridiculous. If you're not going to ask an usher, I am. Look, Mary, they always have some smart aleck guys here who are. Always... I don't care. I'm going to ask them anyway. Oh, Usher. Yes, miss? Uh, here are stubs. Can you tell us where our seats are? I'm awfully sorry, miss. This is my first day here, and I don't really know my way around yet. <laughs> oh. But that's the head usher right over there. I'm sure he can help you. Gee, I guess they must have changed all the ushers since last year. They're so much nicer now. I'll go over and ask the head usher. Uh, pardon me. Are you the head usher? <laughs> Come on, Mary, let's get out of here. Jack, don't be a coward. Ask him. Okay. Look, Usher, can you tell me where my seat is? Right behind you, isn't everybody? <laughs> that does it. Come on, Mary. I don't want to get into any more trouble with Usher. Well, Jack, it's your own fault. Maybe you antagonize him. I do not. You do, too. You keep out of it. Mary, here are two empty seats right here. Let's sit down. The first batter for Seattle is Pavlik. It's St. Jack. Quiet, Mary. Here comes the first pitch. Right. Boy, he really grooved that one in. You know, Mary, in this league, he's one of the best. Jack, why is the catcher holding the ball? Why doesn't he throw it back? I don't know. Everybody seems to be looking out. Ladies and gentlemen, time is called momentarily. There's a man frying eggs on third base. <laughs> How do you like that? That must be Dennis's uncle. Yeah. Play ball. Gee, that pitcher's got a great wind-up. Oh, Where did it go? Where did it go? Jack, look out! Look out! Here it comes! Where? Where? Ooh. Jack! Jack, are you hurt? Ooh. Usher, Usher, get some water, please. You get the water. I'll stay here and slap his face. <laughs> Jack, I'll take you home. Oh. Oh, mister, would, would you help me carry him out, please? Well, sure, lady, I'll help you. Oh, carry me past the box office. I want to get my money back. <laughs> Hurry. I'm in the den, Rochester, listening to the ball game on the radio. I didn't get to see it. Oh, well, I thought maybe... Quiet, quiet. Baker is up to bat. The pitcher winds up. Delivers. It's a long, long fly going towards left field. Looks like a home run. Yes, it's going over the fence. It's still going, going, going. Ooh. <laughs> Good night, folks. <laughs> this has been the Jack Benny Show with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Rochester, Dennis A., and yours truly, Don Wilson. Jack Benny comes to you each week at this time through the facilities of the United States Armed Forces Radio Service.